Okay. So a little bit of stuff about the exam that's Thursday. So this is in the growth lecture, and this is about the media. Somebody asked me earlier before class started about the media. So if I put something in a table, if I take the time to organize in a table, it's important and you need to know all of it. So as it relates to the media, you need to know um, all these different components. Um, and the good news is, remember, you guys know the format of the test, right? It's multiple guess, hopefully not guessing, right? Multiple choice, right? Um, and matching, right? Maybe a few true and false in there. I'm not a huge fan, but I have a certain percentage I got to do. And... <laughs> I usually hopefully make those pretty blatantly off obviously false or true. Um, but, you know, that's all relative. Just like easy or hard is really relative. Um, so, and those of you guys in lab, this will really help you out because three of these medias we use in lab, right? And so if you have an understanding of it now and we get to use it in lab, you're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I know what this does and why this does it. Um, and then, two, unfortunately for you guys, um, because we don't do this until later, like I'm pouring some of this media tomorrow, like EMB. I don't have any things to show you guys because I had to throw everything away that was in the fridge at work. Um, otherwise, I would have had stuff to bring into you. But I, I think I've got pretty good pictures in this. Um, but for some of them, definitely seeing it in person, the blood auger, I find no picture really quite does it justice as actually seeing it. Um, so... Definitely for you guys' future careers and stuff like that, uh, depending on what you go into, you may deal with blood auger, and it would be really good to actually see um, see the real thing. So I will bring some of those in later when we make them in lab, for those of you guys that aren't in lab, so you can see it. Those of you guys that are in lab, of course, will see it and do it. So um, an enrichment that's very common uh, in media is to add blood, um, whether it be whole red blood cells, like we do in blood auger, or lysed red blood cells, because as you know, there's lots of nutrients in there. And because of that, there are lots of bacteria out there that have developed special enzymes called hemolysins that can lyse red blood cells. And there's a particular element that's in high concentration inside our red blood cells that they're after, because they need it for their metabolism as well. Anyone know what that element is? Iron, F-E, right? It's the abbreviation on the periodic table for that. So that's a very common enrichment. Um, chocolate auger is a microbiology kind of funny, right? It's not actually chocolate, is it? It's lysed red blood cells. But guess what color it is? It's brown, right? So even microbiologists have a sense of humor. Um, so for blood auger, is it enriched? Well, yeah, it has one of the most common enrichments in it, and it says it in its name, blood, right? So that's a yes. Um, what's a selective agent? And so these are things that are going to inhibit one group of organisms from growing and select, right? That's how we're selecting for the group that we do want to grow. So what's inhibitory in just straight up blood auger? Nothing. But the blood auger we use in lab does contain antibiotics in it. So when you use blood auger in lab, you'll notice, right, that we talk about how it is actually selective. But that's because antibiotics have been added to that media, right? But straight up blood auger itself is not selective. So there's nothing, we're not inhibiting any particular group, right? It's not applicable. And therefore, we're not selecting for someone to grow either. Is it a differential media, though? Yes. And what is going to be changed by the microorganisms? The red blood cells, right? That's what makes this media differential. Is there a pH indicator in this media? No, not in this media. At, th at this point, we're not looking for some type of fermentation. If you're looking for fermentation, which all the other media do, <laughs> a lot of the differential medias that you look at are dealing with fermentation, then there's usually some type of pH indicator in it. And that's why this one's in that table. So color change or changes. So what are we going to see? We're going to see changes to the red blood cells, right? What are they going to do to the red blood cells that we can see? Not really turn them white. The, the media, if the blood wasn't in it, you could see through it, right? You guys have worked with nutrient auger, right, in lab, right? You could pick up that Petri dish and you can see through it, right? It's not opaque. It's translucent. 
But when you add red blood cells, those are really large, right? And so then it becomes opaque. You can't see through it. But they, there are some organisms that produce hemolysins that completely destroy the red blood cells. So then you're just left with the auger and any other nutrients, and that's translucent. So literally, it will annihilate the red blood cells, completely destroy them. And you can pick up the blood auger plate, and that's what I want to be able to show you guys, and you can see right through it. That's called complete lysis, and it's actually given a, a, a Greek letter. Anyone know what that letter is? Beta. Beta. And how I distinguish beta from alpha, which is the other choice, I always think beta is bad. The worst case scenario, I mean, you can imagine this. For us, that's the worst case, right? Our red blood cells completely annihilated, right? I always think beta bad. And that's what you would see if you had strep throat, right? When I was a kid, you went into the doctor's office, they swabbed your throat, and I kid you not, they rubbed it right onto a blood auger plate right there in the doctor's office, right, to look for that type of lysis. Nowadays, it still gets done. You just don't see it. The swab gets put into a tube and shipped off to a lab, and a technician does it at the lab. But they'll do another sample, right, and they do the rapid strep test, and that's something we'll talk about in immunology and something you guys will do in the last lab of the semester in lab is run in ELISA, right? You can detect antigens like that bacteria or sometimes antibodies in a sample, depending on the type of sample, using antibodies. And this can be done very rapidly, within seconds or minutes. And so that's the rapid strep test. And the, what's the benefit from that? That we can tell you within minutes before you even leave the doctor's office if you have strep or not. Yeah, they're going to start giving you antibiotics right away, right? Where normally, right, they're going to send the prescription over to the pharmacy, and then they'll call you the next day and tell you, oh, yeah, go ahead and pick it up and take them, right? because you, you've confirmed you have strep. Sometimes, too, your rapid strep will come out negative and they call you the next day and they're like, uh, go pick up those antibiotics, I just called it for you. <laughs> you actually have strep. Because sometimes, you know, it's not detectable by the test, right? There's a quick test you can buy at your local pharmacy, runs on the same technology. Women use it all the time. Pregnancy test. Can that come out negative and you actually be pregnant? Absolutely. But it's a pretty specific test, by the way. It's a sensitivity issue there with the negative, right? Usually not enough of the hormone yet in your urine. Don't do like Juno, though. If it comes out positive, trust me, it's probably positive. Go figure out what you're going to do about it. Don't bother taking six more tests. Can't remember how many she did in the movie, but it was ridiculous. I love right? that movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you, it's a pretty specific test. If it comes out positive and you're not happy about that positive, I was happy. I took a picture, you know. <laughs> but some people, not the case, right? Not prepared for that type of result. So, you know, what's the benefit? We can treat sooner, right? Especially when, when it's something like a bacterial infection. You want to know these things sooner so you can act sooner, right? Um, and, and, um, and not be so sick. Now, there's another one that I just recently found out. <laughs> on my trip that's alpha, um, other than um, streptococcus pneumoniae is alpha hemolytic. Um, another pathogen you wouldn't want to mess with um, is anthrax, is also alpha hemolytic, I found out. Um, and so this one just pokes little holes in the red blood cells, so it's what we call incomplete. And the, what happens there is oxygen goes in, and it discolors the hemoglobin, and so it looks kind of greenish. And so another organism that will do that that you find in your mouth is Streptococcus um, mutans. It's the one that um, is associated with dental cavities. Um, so we don't have any alpha hemolytic in the lab. They're, they're too picky to, like, keep happy, those types of organisms. But we're all walking around with one in our mouth. So usually I just do a mouth swab um, and rub it on a blood auger plate, and you get to see the nice greenish discolorization to the blood auger plate. Uh, and, and you can see that. So that one's alpha, right? So, but as I said, I always remember beta bad, complete annihilation of red blood cells. And think of strep throat, streptococcus pryogens. That's the bad guy. 
So as you can see, blood auger can be very helpful, right, in diagnosis of different disease states. Um, and it makes sense, too, why these are so horrible, right? <laughs> because they're annihilating or, just, or, you know, destroying your red blood cells. EMB and McConkie have a lot of similarities. Um, so some labs usually use one or the other. They don't usually use both of these um, because as you'll find out they're both relatively similar. Um, and as I said earlier, MSA, all of these guys deal with um, fermentation and therefore a pH change. So they all have some type of pH indicator in them. So EMB and McConkie are not, none of these are enriched, right? Like I said, blood is the most common enrichment when we say enriched. But EMB is selective. Um, and what is in EMB that makes it selective? First of all, what does EMB stand for? We're so bad about acronyms. Right. And what are, what is eosin and methylene blue? They're dyes. They're dyes. Um, so what do dyes do to organisms? They stain them, but they can also kill them, right? I always have this envision of the poor swan at UMass Amherst where I went to undergrad because one fraternity one time thought it would be really funny to paint it pink, like a flamingo. They killed it. And swans mate for life. So the swan that's left there, he's, he or she is very unhappy, to say the least, right? So staining kills. <laughs> some organisms, right? This is going to kill them. Okay, so that's your inhibitory things, is the dyes, right? Because these dyes, these stains, they can kill. Who can they kill? Gram-positive, right? And they don't kill gram-negative when they're alive. What's unique about gram-negatives that helps protect them? What extra layer do they have that gram-negatives do not have? Nope, both got peptidoglycan. Nope, that's what the cell wall is made out is peptidoglycan. They both have lipid bilayer that makes up their membrane. So they're both membrane, peptidoglycan, echoic acid. Nope, that's gram positives. So they both have a membrane. They both have peptidoglycan, gram-positive have a thick layer, gram-negatives have a thin layer, and then gram-negatives have a second membrane called the, the outer membrane. And the very outer leaflet is made of lipopolysaccharides, LPS. And this is really hard to penetrate. It's really hard for stuff to get in. So in this case, it's protected, right, because of that outer membrane. So what's differential about this media? What's going to get changed by these organisms? Lactose and or sucrose. And I can tell you the formula we use in lab actually only contains the, the lactose. It does not have the sucrose in it. So we're, we're literally looking just for lactose fermentation. So with fermentation, you get acid production. Right? You can also get alcohols. Right? We like that kind of fermentation, don't we? Right? Um, and you can also get gases. Nope, not you there. Not that one. But you're right, one of them turns yellow. Okay, so this one, what's the pH indicator? What's going to help us know that acid was produced? The two dyes, right? These are actually also pH indicators. So what color changes are you going to see? Well, it depends on the organism and how much acid it produced, right? E. coli is my favorite on this media, because what does it look like? Yeah, it's metallic green. It goes from black to, like, metallic green sheen. It's shiny. Others will be pink or purple, and if they don't do any fermentation, they're not going to react with the dyes, and you're not going to see any color change. The McConkie agar, as we said, not enriched, but this one is selective. But what is in this that's inhibitory? What are the selective agents? What's going to kill off the gram positives? Because these media are similar, right, in that we're selecting for gram negatives. 
right, and bile salts. The crystal violet and the bile salts. And again, they can't get into the gram negatives, so it kills off the positives. We're stuck with gram negatives. Again, what are we looking for? Ch change related to what sugar? Lactose. This one's just lactose. But in this case, what's going to be our pH indicator? No, you would think, huh? Yes, it's neutral red. It's neutral red. So these organisms, when they produce the acid, they're going to turn red. Or like pinkish. But I've seen some really bright reds, too. We don't use McConkie in the lab. Mostly because I, I like the shiny green E. coli. <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, MSA we use. Um, it's not enriched. Again, this is a selective media. So what in the media is selecting for a particular group of organisms? What does MSA stand for? Arger, right. So what do you think is inhibitory? The salt. So in this case, most media are going to take salt for isotonic balance. In this case, this is a higher than normal concentration, 7.5%. This is really salty. So non-salt tolerant organisms are going to be killed off. So in this case, we're selecting for salt tolerant, which are typically, when we're looking at clinical specimens, we're looking for staphylococci. Specifically, we're looking for one that ferments the sugar that's in the alcohol form. That's why it ends in OL. It's a sugar alcohol. What's the name of this media? Mannitol. So that's the sugar they're fermenting. What's the pH indicator in this one? Phenol rib. So, Makisha, what color does it turn when they ferment? Yellow. And we use this pH indicator in the lab twice, right? You guys inoculated tubes that contained phenol red. Uh, so most of, actually, most of them will turn yellow, right? Most of them are going to ferment the sugar that we use. In the phenol red tubes, it's actually glucose. So, picture's worth a thousand words, right? So, there's the pretty E. coli, right? You see how it's shiny on the EMB and this one, no color change? Which, where's my pictures? Oh, there's the Staph aureus, which is typically what we're looking for. That's the mannitol fermenter that'll grow, but it'll eat the mannitol, and so it turns yellow. Where this is Staph epi that was put on a plate, the Staph that's normally on your skin, doesn't create any problems. Staph aureus you carry, some people carry in their nose, and then when it gets into the skin, it can cause some serious infections, or if it gets other places. And then if you have the antibiotic resistant strain, whether it be MRSA or VERSA, then the story gets even worse, right? I don't have any other pictures. Oh, there's McConkie. You see how it's kind of pink? This isn't the best picture. I need to find some red ones. Um, there's the blood agar. So as I said, you know, completely annihilates, right, when you have strep throat. And this green, I, I, I just, I can never find a picture, but I will bring in a green plate for you guys to see this green so that you know what it really looks like in the real world. And gamma is what we call non-hemolytic. I hate that term, but it just grows because there's other stuff to eat other than red blood cells. It just doesn't affect the red blood cells. So hopefully you guys feel a little bit better about the media, right? All of this is on the test. So remember, we went through it really quickly last time, and I wanted you guys to cover most of it on your own. I wanted you to do those connect assignments before tonight. Not all of you did. But remember, I'm around. So if you do end up having questions, you better ask me before Thursday. Because this is it. We're moving on. Right. The rest of this is pretty self-explanatory, plus you have my recordings from last semester, right, uh, that you guys could listen to. So the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory, but I know that can be kind of tough. That table, you got to know all of that. So someone asked me earlier about it, so I was glad to just go over it with you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of important information in that.
Okay. So, I actually have this in my other folder. It's a different unit for them. I have to get 8,000 copies of this PowerPoint. But I want to end this one, actually.